So, not your ordinary war movie or Afghanistan set movie. It's, um, I mean, there are a lot of war movies w where people kind of lose their way or they go primitive or something, um, or there's some sort of culture clash. But something else is happening here. Um, how would you describe what's, what's happening to these soldiers? Actually, uh, I don't know what really happened. Um, but the idea was to to play with the genre of different kind of film, not uh, just for the the pleasure of ex experiment the codes or something like that, like this. But I think it was just the best way to express or to conduct the story I wanted to to tell. So that's why the the beginning of the film starts like a classical war, like in a documentary mood movie, and then switch into a kind of investigation, then there is like a um, supernatural element in it that in a, in a way plays with the genre of the horror film and then finally opens to, to something which I would just like, would like to be to be, to be my film. Yeah, that's what uh, I try to do. I, I mean, what's fascinating about the captain is that he has this urge to make sense of things, to have some, to be able to give orders that make sense, basically, <laughs> uh, and to know what's going on. And I mean, one of the great scenes in the movie for me is when he's watching the prayer circle that's going on. And the expression on his face is some combination of, I mean, not fully understanding, but also I, I thought a certain yearning to have what they had, in a way, it's because he seems to be lacking something spiritual. Or yeah, in, in a way, this scene is really important for me, like the the scene when the, the soldiers, the soldier is dancing with the eye in the back. It's uh, for me the two, two moments where the soldiers are understanding that they are to fight something and due to conduct this fight or during this fight the, the, their weapons are useless. So they have to find something in themselves that kind of energy of kind of um, uh, mood which is not which is not uh, something like weapon um, we'll go to some questions shortly but I, I just wanted to ask about the um, visual technique of the movie because another thing that's interesting is that you use a lot of infrared not infrared infrared is that what it is? infrared, infrared. infrared. so you you were actually filming through infrared for, with that yes uh, the regular way of to do that is like we we saw um, that in many big American film like uh, Zero Dark Thirty. Actually, you 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 built the set in studio, then you shot with a big camera, and everything is lighted, and then you put in post production you you put a, an effect like green effect, and that give you the the infrared effect. But the the first thing is that is it's really expensive. It, it would have cost the, the whole budget of my film to do that. And also, um, as a filmmaker or as a visual uh, artist, when I saw these kind of pictures, even when the film is really good, or while I'm completely involved in the, in the film as an audience, I, I feel that it's not really true. Um, so the best way for me to do it, like for first for the budget, and, and then for the, the quality of realism I, I wanted in the in the film was to just to buy the real uh, infrared Google or thermical Google from the army and then to use a small pocket camera and to film through it and that gives this really particular effect which is really chaotic um, when the, the eye is sometimes totally in the dark and it's kind of pixel and then completely dazed by the, 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 the light and this balance with between these two extremities of obscurity, and the darkness, and then the, the, the white light, for me is also uh, very important, like metaphorically, right? it gives the sensation of what it, the, the, the sensation of, of lost in perception. Maybe we can uh, get a question or two from the audience. Yes, sir. Uh, can I just might repeat the question, so. It, uh, the question is about Apocalypse Now that seems to have a certain uh, in, you know, echo here and um, why didn't uh, why did the director leave the captain with his madness in a way? Uh, of course I, I saw Apocalypse Now and 
when you're f young French filmmaker and you're trying to make a war film, it's it's really really hard to to be confronted to the American cinema because of course it's the reference. It's, it's a really heavy. Um, and of course, I, I, it was not possible to like to 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 play the reference with Apocalypse. No, it's too big. It's too too expensive. To the show is too too big. So uh, it was the, the idea was to find other path or other way to to express the war or to express this kind of madness uh, with other things that the, the battle or effects. And the question where I I didn't. I didn't um, less the, the, the um, uh, I didn't leave the captain in, in his manners first that because it has been already done in Apocalypse now and then it was really important for me that the captain is going back into the real world with this kind of knowledge of this phenomenon and I will have to to live with this phenomenon and with this uh, knowledge in him. A question is about uh, the thought of, about religion, thinking behind religion that went into making the film. Um, I'm most more interested in spirituality than in religion, but you find spirituality in, in religion, and especially in the mystical part of religion. Like for Islam, it's Sufi, so there is so many many references to the Sufi culture and the film. Sometimes really obvious, like the the, the dance, the prayer scene. And some other, well, maybe only the the people from the Sufi culture can 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 know it. Um, but it was also important for for me to 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 put together some element who belongs to the Bible and to the Quran, and then to 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 include in the in the in the script uh, text from the Bible and the Quran, and also to show that there are more. Things in common that, are, that than differences, but because they are son of Abraham. Well, I mean, one thing just a specific detail that I thought was interesting is the cave story. Could you tell us a bit about the story about the cave? Um, the cave story. First, it, it uh, to 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 continue with the text. The text read from the the Quran is the it's called the surah from the cave. And for us, it sounds like a really strange story or fairy tale for for children. But in the Muslim world, Muslim world, it's really famous, and it's it's you could compare it to the the story of I don't know Jesus changing the the, the water and wine or something like this. So when I'm showing the film in in I, I used to to show it in Algeria, in Morocco, in Liban, in in, in Cairo, uh, the reaction I immediately. Why and uh, how did you know this story? It's it's really famous, and I love this story. The story of people who fall asleep in a, in this cave, and then they uh, in the film there is not the the whole story, but then they wake up and they go back to the to the city, but and they want to to buy something to eat, but the money is not uh, is not modern anymore. It, it doesn't have any value, so they can't do anything. So they go back to the cave and continue to sleep for hundred and hundred years. Um, so uh, this the, the this cave is the like the converging point of the of the film where the Taliban's and the locals and the soldiers are. It's something they have in common. And the idea was to create a, a moment, a, sec a sequence where, for like maybe one minute or one minute and uh, one thirty minutes, they are here together in a peaceful moment when the, there is no more question of war. Or fighting, but just mm, the missing man and the, the maybe the beginning of mourning this man because we we start to 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 understand that we we won't find them if they are not here. So this empty space, this cave, and it's like the the, the belly of the of the mountain. It's like they are here together and they don't even think about fighting at this moment, this silent moment. It's the captain, yes. So it's speaking. It's a lion because he's speaking uh, for William, like as if he was William. But it's him speaking. Yeah. 
sometimes it's not really clear for everybody, but it's his voice here. Yeah. Um, uh, way in the back, yeah. The question is about the, the letter to Sarah, which is very beautifully written. Um, for me, it's the, the only moment when the captain uh, is speaking without giving orders, without trying to, to take things under control and it's just expressing something and I think it's just needing to it just needs to put words on something who is completely um, bigger than him and that he don't um, he doesn't understand at all but he has to to tell something about it and to create kind of fiction to manage to to live with that and so it's kind of spiritual poem that he's which is his uh, maybe own mythology to to manage to to cohabitate maybe with uh, with this mystery um i had many small references in the in the cinema like uh, I, I love the film from Werner Herzog um, this way of shooting uh, things in the really far part, part really far of the world with a culture completely different in a really documentary way. I was also inspired by a stalker. Tarkovsky. Yeah, from Tarkovsky. Um, also, of course, uh, with by many film about uh, modern warfare. Um, and in literature, I'm a, I'm big, uh, I read a lot of um, books from Bulgakov or Gabriel Garcia Marquez, this kind of uh, realistic mag uh, how do you say? Uh, magic, realism. magic realism, where there is a completely realistic world with rules and everything seems to be clear. And then something like the devil is arriving and is disturbing the rules. I like a lot these kind of stories. Or, or something bursts into flame. Sort of something. something bursts into flame. Yeah. And fire. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, from the beginning in the project, there was I wanted to to mix and to edit two kind of music, like re one really contemporary and an electronic music with uh, ancient music. From this is really old music from the Middle Age, like French Middle Age music. Uh, I, uh, there is also a piece of uh, uh, Bach, but most of this is liturgic music from the from the Christian liturgy, and uh, played uh, at uh, viola, viola de gamba, so it's an old, uh, old cello. And for two reasons, the first is that, that I like this music, and it gives a Particular emotion in the in the scenes, and it's completely unexpected. Like in a war film, you don't expect this kind of music. And I think it, it gives a bit mel love melancholic to the characters. It, it maybe for me, this kind of music helped them to to go on. And uh, also because this music connects the, the the story to something more ancient, very old, and um, this story could have happened. Maybe they are the Middle Age, uh, there could be knights in a castle in the, in the desert, because uh, the, the world doesn't have any age, it's from all time, it's timeless. And uh, this question of death and, and God doesn't, is timeless also. So it, it, maybe this music helped me to, to, um, to connect the, 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 the situation to something older and more myth mythological. Um, well, one other thing I just want to mention, um, we were just talking about influences and from, you know, and books, but uh, you were also obviously um, an artist in, in, you know, beyond film. Um, could you talk a bit about how your, your work for, for gallery art, how that kind of intersects with this or feeds into this? Uh, yes, I work a lot of with the video, video installation of photograph. And um, this kind of experiment helped me to um, for this film to create the, the, the visual aspect of the, of the film, the work with I'm a lot interested in the, in the image, I would say the imagery of control of the, the, the control devices with, um, with the images. And that's so the, the question of belief is really important if my work in a, in a metaphoric and, and sometimes a spiritual way. 
I mean, you know, one one interesting thing is the that um, the heat blanket. It's kind of like a modern magic trick <laughs> that that he does. You know, he's able to, with, you know, the night thing, and then put it on, and then poof. You know, it's, it's, so it's this. It's, we know that there's some science behind it, but at the same time, there's still something mysterious about it. You mean the? With the, I mean the the uh, somebody called the reflective blanket that they put uh, the, on. the golden. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm I'm really interested by the the question of the, um, the invisibility and and in the army the invisibility is camouflage, so the different technical techniques of of camouflage were I wanted to experiment it in the in the script, and so this technique of of camouflage with the golden uh, blanket I is real, actually it's not used in in the army because as the the surgeon said you can use it when uh, when in 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 moving because. Um, it doesn't work, but it's used for the illegal immigrant in in Europe, or especially in France, who want to cross the the, um, the tunnel for for England, and they hide in trucks. And um, when the, the the trucks arrive at the, the border and the custom, there is them there are thermal camera, and so they hide under uh, golden blankets, and sometimes that they die because you can't really breathe under this. And um, but so the, for for this moment they are invisible to the thermal camera. So uh, I wanted to to just to show that th this technology. But there are also some other way of of camouflage. Uh, the the way the Taliban are, are hidden in the mountain. It's a really old um, uh, way of uh, of camouflage. Actually, it 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 was used for the first war with the Soviet army, and that helped them to 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 win the war actually. With the with the mujahideen, and uh, but also this this uh, camouflage doesn't ha is is timeless because it, you could use it also in the Middle Age. And maybe the last moment where we are talking about um, there's something about camouflage in the film is where there's a chameleon. You know, it's like the the most timeless camouflage. Right? So for me, it's something metaphoric because it was not in the script first, but when I I just arrived in the in the valley, I I traveled. I traveled uh, along all Morocco, and uh, the the geography of the script was so precise, and it was important that to to find this location to make the script work. And uh, after maybe one month of traveling in Morocco, I just found this valley, and it, I immediately recognized the, the valley I wrote in the script. And um, then I went down to the to to the border in the film, and the, it was really sunny. And I just put my, my my eyes on the on the ground because the the sun was too too, too light, and I I just saw like a stone moving, you know, in the ground, and I just look a bit better and I saw a chameleon in the stone, and I just understood that it was the meaning of the film because it's something that you don't see but it's it, it's here, you know, and so I I included the the chameleon. It was part of the cast then. Non-professional actor, but yeah, really good. No pressure. Are you working on a new film? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm working on a new new script, uh, based in Paris, and uh, the main character is a medium. Uh, the, the question is about uh, at the end when he's taken before the military court. And is, is the question that whether that's the kind of expo that's the wrap up explanation of the ending or? Yeah, the the solution found by the the captain is to make the army believe that there was like a friendly fire and the um, uh, soldiers have been killed by the, the the planes, the bombing of the plane, and to put like the the, the ships in the body bags, and uh, it's not clear for 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 everybody sometimes uh, because there were in the, in the script a scene where the captain was ordering the bombing and we got it at the ed in the editing room it was too too much explanation and i know that sometimes it's not clear but uh, it, for the end of the film we needed something more chaotic with less words and less explanations just events and sensations all right, I'm afraid that's all the time we have now. But uh, Carmel, thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you.